Mali's military government says its forces have killed a senior Islamic State commander, Habu Huzaifa, during a joint operation with Burkina Faso and Niger. Huzaifa, who had a $5 million bounty on his head, had been linked to high-profile attacks in Africa's Sahel region, including the killing of four U.S. soldiers. Some experts say the junta will use this success to justify its stay in power. Mohamed Yassouf reports. Malian authorities said Monday their forces killed Islamic State Commander Abu Huzaifa in a security operation in the northern region of Menaka. Huzaifa, a Moroccan, was wanted for acts of terrorism and the deaths of civilians and security officers, including four U.S. soldiers killed in Niger in 2017. Olawale Ojoale is a regional coordinator at the Senegal-based Institute of Security Studies. He says the killing of a terror commander does not equate to the end of terrorism. It is always celebrated within the, within the security community and the communities that they have also terrorized. But there's no sufficient evidence to show that maybe those groups begin to decline after the killing of their strategic leaders. But I think it's a symbolic victory, particularly for the military government in Mali. In the context of the security rearrangement that has been going on in that region for a while now since they came into power, the taking of Kida and this particular one. The killing comes several weeks after Mali, Burkina Faso and Niger formed a joint force to fight the insurgent groups. The three West African nations are battling terror threats and attacks by groups affiliated with Islamic State and Al-Qaeda. Experts say the killing of a terror group leader rarely changes the attacks against civilians and security forces. David Otto, head of security and defense analysis with the Geneva Center for Africa Security and Strategic Studies, says the ability of Islamic State to launch more attacks and remain a threat will depend on how Abu Huzaifa ran the group's affairs. It depends on the structural or, or how centralized uh, the leadership was. Uh, of the uh, Sahel province. So if, if he had all the power, then, uh, of course, it would disrupt uh, the stra- at the strategic level and may have some operational, um, you know, impact, you know, negative to what the group wants to achieve. But if he were, you know, if he were to have commanders that, you know, were already in line of succession, then, of course, it's just going to be a, a new replacement. Now, the problem is that the new man could be more dangerous than himself, Um, you know, but it could also be a much more weaker leader. Attacks by terror groups have killed thousands and displaced more than 500,000 people from their homes in the Sahel in recent years. They are accused of committing human rights violations against the population living in areas under their control. Just like in Burkina Faso and Niger, Mali's military overthrew the civilian-led government accusing it of failing to effectively fight the jihadists. Political and media freedoms have been shrinking in Mali for years, but Ojoela fears the military junta will use the killing of a commander to further suppress critical voices. It's a symbolic victory for them, and they can use that to justify their stay in power. There is a constant erosion of civil liberty. Just a few days ago, they are locking the media out, which is a complete blackout that has happened in Mali, that is happening in Burkina Faso, that is also happening in Niger. Opposition, dissenting voices cannot express themselves. To the extent to which that is taking place, then we can't say, we can't give them thumb up um, for, for whatever they are doing. Mali's government ordered French troops to leave the country 2022 and for the UN mission to close its mission in the country last year. Meantime, it formed closer relations with the Russian government and the Wagner mercenary group. Now, with the killing of the ICE commander, regional experts say the prospect of the military returning power to a civilian government seems distant. Mohamed Yusuf, VOA News, Nairobi. The United Nations mission in South Sudan said on Tuesday 3rd it deployed additional peacekeepers and launched agent patrols following fresh outbreaks of intercommunal violence in western Equatoria and eastern Equatoria states. This came after armed Maro youth from the Greater People Administrative Area on April 26th attacked Kapota 
East County of Eastern Equatoria State, resulting in the death of civilians, abduction of women and children, and mass displacement of vulnerable communities. Efforts are underway to verify the number of casualties, but preliminary reports indicate that a significant number of people were killed, many women and children were abducted, and hundreds of cattle were stolen, the UN Miss said in a statement issued in Juba, the capital of South Sudan. It noted that another boat of communal violence in Tambula, town of Western Equatoria State, has also displaced more than 13,000 people who are currently being hosted at a displacement camp outside a temporary base operated by the UN Miss. The UN mission added that another 4,000 people have arrived at another displacement camp in Tambula town following renewed violence. Tensions between communities from different ethnic backgrounds are high following a series of incidents, including the killing of civilians, disappearance of a priest who is a member of the Tambula Peace Communities, and the touching of homes, it disclosed. Nicholas Heyson, special representative of the Secretary General and head of the UN Miss, said the peacekeeping mission is doing its utmost to protect civilians caught up at in intercommunal violence. In response to the incident in Eastern Equatoria, the UN mission said it requested GPAA authorities to recover all those abducted and reunite them with their families as well as to impose the rule of law to prevent further incidents.